Well, bluefin tuna is sort of what I would call the um, test case for whether uh, governments can really stick to a science-based uh, management plan. They're so lucrative uh, as a fishery that it's probably the worst, these have been some of the worst managed fisheries because of the um, desire for this very uh, luxurious fish. However, um, as bluefin tuna go, all tuna go eventually because we call it to some extent the conveyor belt of tuna. Um, you start, if you run out of one, you go to the next and uh, that's, it's not been on a good trajectory. By 2014, the stock assessment said that bluefin tuna were down to 2.6% of their uh, unfished biomass, uh, which meant that it was about the lowest they've ever seen a fish go. Uh, a lot of concern about whether it could recover. It actually had all the nations of the Pacific agree to uh, set uh, catch limits at a science-based standard, a 20% uh, biomass excuse me, 20% um, of MSY, uh, maximum sustainable yield, which is a science-based standard. It's a minimal but well-established well benchmark for science-based management. Well, in the United States, we don't eat a lot of bluefin tuna um, or import a lot of bluefin tuna, but uh, the governments are responding well. Uh, the industry, the recreational industry, is very strongly supportive of a well-managed bluefin fishery because it's a prized um, recreational fish. And in general, chefs and businesses, uh, we about 90% of the U.S. market um, is very strongly supportive of um, sustainable seafood, and we red rate most of the most all bluefin tuna species, but we do promote um, tunas like yellowfin and others that are caught sustainably. And so uh, a lot of our business partners have been transitioning to those. One is to try and establish, because they're such a highly prized species, a catch documentation uh, mechanism has been uh, proposed uh, for all tuna, all bluefin tunas. It started to be established in the Atlantic. And the Pacific, uh, you know, I think the challenge there is just getting into a digital form. Um, but to be honest, uh, Japan in particular, which is the major importer uh, and, and user of bluefin tuna, it keeps meticulous records. So in the Pacific, I think we have a pretty good sense of it. The Atlantic, where it moves in lots of different directions, is the place where uh, that's been happening. Um, certainly another thing is that the U.S. has established the, the, um, a new rule for traceability that requires importers to document where and when they caught, they, where, where they caught the fish and whether it was legally caught and they have to document it. So that puts um, the importers on the hook for um, attesting to the legality of it. But the challenges are that uh, there's a legal activity everywhere. Um, and, uh, and so there's a whole task force report that came out on it. There's multiple mechanisms that were agreed to at the UN that will have to be continued. But uh, to be honest, the end user, the consumer, should be asking. That signal goes through the system, and these companies, whether it's Red Lobster or others, are going to be paying attention, and, and, and I think the press should pay attention too.